I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This upcoming report card will not be given now. You will have to check Skyward for your grades. And gold cards and backpack tags will be given this Friday or the following Monday. Yeehaw, partner. Gee, Wilkers, I sure do want a yearbook. Well, I did hear from a little birdie that uh, if you pre-order, it's only $25 and you get the deluxe edition. But if you're a bit too late to the party, you can, it's only $29. So it's a pretty stinking darn good deal. Which reminds me. Come on, me, little horsey. That reminds me of a spaghetti western, which also reminds me of Fazoli's... Hey Falcons, it's that time of year. Yearbook orders have begun. Due to a surplus from last year's successful yearbook sales, we are able to offer an early bird discount. Order now through March 6th and your yearbook will only cost $25. Orders March 7th through 18th will cost the full $29 selling price. Order early and save. You can order online or in person. Order forms are available in the bookstore. Cash or checks made payable to Northview Middle School are accepted. Don't delay. Order today. If you are interested in buying a yearbook, um, you can pre-order them now through March 6th. The yearbook prices are $25. You can order online or turn in a form from the bookstore. Cash and checks are payable to Northview Middle School. Okay. <laughs> Are you in 8th grade in the class of 2024? Oakland Gym and Pizza Night is for you. Friday, February 21st, 430 to 6. Pay in your advisory through February 20th, and no tickets will be sold at the event. Dollars if you want to come. Yeah, don't be broke. <laughs> Just be woke. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my The time home. has come to reaffirm Every our enduring spirit, to choose our better history, to oh, carry forward freedom. that precious gift, that noble idea passed on from generation to generation, the God-given promise that all are equal, all are free, and all deserve a chance to pursue their full measure of happiness. The quest for equal rights and fair treatment was still a daily struggle for African Americans in the early 1950s, but progress was being made to end the segregation practices of the Jim Crow era. Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier when he became the first African American to play Major League Baseball since the 1800s, joining the Brooklyn Dodgers as the first baseman. The NAACP and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference were working hard to challenge segregation laws, filing lawsuits in various states across the South. One such case was Brown versus the Board of Education of Topeka, 1954. Oliver Brown sued the school district on behalf of his daughter, Linda. Despite the fact that there was an all-white elementary school just four blocks away from her house, Linda was forced to walk across a set of train tracks to catch a bus that drove her a great distance to her segregated elementary school. Brown tried to enroll Linda in the nearby white school and was denied. He then agreed to be the lead plaintiff in the NAACP's class action lawsuit against the Topeka, Kansas School Board. Skillfully represented by dynamic attorney and civil rights activist Thurgood Marshall, the case ended up in front of the Supreme Court. After much deliberation, the court unanimously ruled in favor of Brown. 
handing down a ruling that overturned the separate but equal doctrine established by Plessy v. Ferguson in 1896. Segregation based on race was no longer legal. On May 17, 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court issued its landmark decision in the case of Brown v. Board of Education. The court ruled unanimously that racial segregation in public schools violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. This decision grew out of several cases that challenged racial segregation in schools across America. Because the lawsuits addressed the same legal questions, the Supreme Court consolidated them into one case. Its lead plaintiff was Oliver Brown. He sued the Topeka, Kansas Board of Education on behalf of his daughter, Linda. She was a black public school student who lived just a few blocks from an elementary school in Topeka. However, she was forced to travel over an hour to reach the all-black school she was assigned to attend. When she tried to enroll in the closer neighborhood school, which was all white, the request was denied. In the U.S. Supreme Court, Brown was represented by NAACP lawyer Thurgood Marshall. He argued that segregated schools were harmful and left black children with feelings of inferiority. The court unanimously decided in Brown's favor, declaring that separate educational facilities were, without exception, unequal. Chief Justice Earl Warren declared that, quote, in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. And while it didn't happen immediately, this ruling paved the way for integration and was a major victory for the civil rights movement. Despite the Brown versus Board ruling, desegregation was slow to come about, and when it did, it did not come easily. In 1957, nine black students were selected to begin desegregation at Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. These nine students were met with angry mobs and military resistance and were barred from entering the school building. They were kept out by the order of the governor for almost a month before they were able to attend school. The local newspaper, the Arkansas Gazette at that time, uh, indicated that the Brown decision was going to change the face of the South forever. I remember those words. And I thought to myself, good, because I think the face of the South ought to change. I will not force my people to integrate against their will. The governor of the state, Orville Faubus, decided that he was going to use Central as his point of resistance. None of us of the nine anticipated that the resistance would be as strong as it was. The night before we were to go to school, the governor called out the Arkansas National Guard, unbeknownst to us. Uh, and when we appeared at, at Central the first day, Sealed off. the National Guard was there to bar our entrance and let white students go into the school. What it was like, it was rejection that uh, I had never experienced like that. It seemed to me that if they were going to all of this trouble to keep me out, there was something bigger than my simply going to class. Only when we got home from school that day did we realize what an ordeal, personal ordeal, Elizabeth had gone through and that she certainly faced more of the mob directly. I, I always applaud the fact that she was able to keep both her composure and try to figure out how to get out of that. We started school on the 25th of September. President Eisenhower sends 500 troops of the 101st Airborne Division of the United States Army. It was a terrific feeling that President of the United States would send troops to escort us into school. I, I didn't know what was going to happen after that. It was like going to war every day. Uh, you had students who tried to use as much verbiage as they could to intimidate us. We had threats and uh, comments that, uh, you know, we would be killed for all of us. We decided that this was uh, a year that we were going to support each other. We were going to try to do as well as we could uh, in our academic work. Some were a lot smarter than me, but I also was determined that this year I was going to graduate from Central. The uh, principal of the school told me at one point along the way that um, 
I didn't have to come to the ceremony. They would mail me my diploma. And I thought, listen, I didn't go through all this to uh, pass up the, uh, the ceremony. Maybe the, the world thought that after Little Rock, everything is going to be fixed. And one of the important pieces, I, I'm sure I don't need it to remind anyone, that the history of slavery in this country makes it very difficult to overcome a lot of issues on race. We're a long way from being perfect, but we certainly are not what we were when I started out. I, I believe that our participation at Central is one of those many steps that's gone to change this country for the better. A few years later, Ruby Bridges was the first African-American child to desegregate an all-white elementary school. Her parents were divided about the decision to let her go to an all-white school. Her father was worried about her safety, but her mother wanted to give her a better education. Ultimately, they decided to allow her to attend William French Elementary School in New Orleans, Louisiana. Ruby and her mother were escorted by security every day that year. Although she faced many challenges as an African-American student, Barbara Henry, her teacher, accepted Ruby and gave her a chance to learn. She never missed a day of school and was determined to learn even with the setback she faced. Let's check it out. Shut the camera off. See the batteries. Check it out.